This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. And I'm Juan Gonzalez. Welcome to all of our listeners and viewers across the country and around the world. The verdict is in. Disgraced former Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein has been convicted of rape. On Monday, a Manhattan jury of seven men and five women found Weinstein guilty of raping then-aspiring actress Jessica Mann in a hotel room in 2013 and of sexually assaulting production assistant Mimi Haley at his apartment in 2006 by forcibly performing oral sex on her. Weinstein was convicted of first-degree commission of a criminal sexual act and third-degree rape. But he was acquitted of two more serious charges of predatory sexual assault and first-degree rape. He faces a total sentence of up to 29 years in prison. After the verdict was announced, Judge James Burke ordered Weinstein to be taken to jail immediately. Weinstein was handcuffed and let out of the courtroom. His attorneys say he experienced heart palpitations and high blood pressure when he was being taken to Rikers Island Jail. He was reportedly then transferred to a locked unit at Bellevue Hospital. This is attorney Deborah Katz addressing the media after Weinstein's conviction. Katz represents costume designer Dawn Dunning, one of Weinstein's accusers who testified in the trial. Doug and I were in court as we saw Harvey Weinstein being remanded into police custody. Harvey Weinstein is exactly where he should be now, behind bars. Meanwhile, Manhattan District Attorney Cyrus Vance called Weinstein a, quote, vicious serial pre a sexual predator and said the women who testified against Weinstein were heroic. To the survivors of Harvey Weinstein, I owe and we all owe an immense debt to you who had the courage beyond measure to speak your story to the world to this courtroom at great personal risk and in great personal pain. To those of us who were privileged to be in the courtroom when they testified, you know what I mean. These survivors weren't just brave, they were heroic. Harvey Weinstein's sentencing has been set for March 11th. The verdict comes after weeks of testimony from a slew of accusers who described alleged rapes, forced oral sex and groping by Weinstein. Weinstein's New York trial was the first criminal case to arise from allegations against him made by more than 90 women, including actresses Salma Hayek and Ashley Judge. Or Uma Thurman and Gwyneth Paltrow and Mira Servino. But many of those cases were too old to prosecute. Weinstein still faces charges in Los Angeles. Authorities allege he raped one woman and sexually assaulted another on back-to-back -back nights in 2013 during Oscars week. Well, for more, we're joined by two guests in New York and L.A. In Los Angeles, Rosanna Arquette is an award-winning actress, filmmaker and activist, one of the first women to share details of Harvey Weinstein's sexual misconduct. Arquette has been closely following the New York trial of Weinstein. And here in New York, Tarana Burke, founder of the Me Too movement. She founded the Me Too hashtag in 2006 to focus on young women of color who have endured sexual abuse, assault or exploitation. Burke is now the executive director of the newly established organization of the same name, also known is Me Too International. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! I want to begin with Rosanna Arquette. You were one of the first to speak out against Harvey Weinstein because of your own experience with him. Can you respond to yesterday's verdict? Um, I think it, <clears throat> it, even though it was five counts, uh, that were, it was only three counts, um, it, uh, were, uh, we are happy. It's a beginning. It's an opening. This is very, very important. It's a seismic cultural shift in a lot of ways. And it's really important that this man be held accountable for his actions and to convict a very powerful white male is a big deal. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy that he's going to go to jail one way or the no another. Uh, and Tarana Burke, I wanted to ask you first your reaction to the verdict, but then also you, you issued a statement afterwards saying that you thought that this jury worked with an incredibly narrow and unjust set of laws governing sexual assault. I'm wondering if you could elaborate on that. Well, my reaction was similar to a lot of people, I think a sense of relief, um, knowing that this is not the fullness of what accountability can look like, to have some accountability from a person as powerful as Harvey Weinstein knowing the survivors, knowing some of them personally, knowing it just felt like cathartic to them. Um, I was definitely relieved that there was some, con there was some conviction. But 
you know, the reason why I said that in a statement is because if you, there was a lot of uh, chatter about people not believing uh, folks like Annabella Esquiora and her testimony, and that's why he wasn't um, convicted on the higher charges. And really, I think we have to examine what the laws look like around sexual violence. Not the the. It's not so much the. Um, the people who came forward, but what they had to work with. The charges were 27 years old. There are statute of limitations. There, there's not enough law to cover the breadth of what sexual violence actually is and what it does in people's lives. So they worked with what they had. Hmm. Um, the jury convicted Weinstein of felony sex crime and rape, but acquitted him of predatory sexual assault. Um, the you know, acquitted of the most serious charges, but still faces up to 29 years mm -hmm. in jail. Uh, the New York Times um, wrote on the two counts of predatory sexual assault, the not guilty verdicts suggested the jurors did not believe the testimony of Annabella Sciorra, an actress best known for her work in The Sopranos. Your response, and then I want to get Rosanna's as well. Again, I don't, I don't know that we can assume that they didn't believe her as much as they couldn't get to where they needed to get to, to, to convict him of that crime. And I think it's really dangerous to put out this narrative that she wasn't believed, right? Because she came and she testified about this really horrendous thing. And to make that assumption sends a message to survivors that we don't need to send, that if you come forward that folks won't believe you. The laws are very narrow around what you can, and the, the burden of proof is very different than it is for, say, a civil case or, or a case that was more recent. So I think we have to be careful about saying they didn't believe her. And Rosanna Arquette, your response? Well, I'm, I, everything that the Queen Tirana said, <laughs> 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 because she's our hero and um, and she's right. Uh, we, we really do have to do change the laws. That's what, what's next. Um, Annabella Shora testimony, um, I believe that had she not done that in the courtroom, we wouldn't be here today. I think they did listen to her, um, but because of there were, they couldn't charge for some reason. Something happened with the jury, and I want to thank the jury for 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 uh, for deliberating and taking the time and doing this as much as they possibly could, because I actually don't think it was actually their fault in this. And Rosanna Arquette, I wanted to ask you, in, in terms of the uh, the strategy of Weinstein's uh, defense attorneys, you watched the, uh, uh, the proceedings of the of the court uh, of the trial closely. Your reaction to their attempt to uh, discredit the testimony of the of the women who were are charging him with these crimes. Well, you know, the, those are the dirty tactics that Harvey Weinstein always played for years and years. That's how he manipulated people including, um, you know, there's a lot of evidence missing in the years of Cy Vance. I'm so happy he's on board now, but many years ago he wasn't. And uh, and so this is how he plays. Uh, she was—it was horrible to watch and to be called the, you know, the—I felt so bad for the witnesses. I, um, they uh, He's on trial, not the women. That's what everybody forgets. We're going to break and then come back to this Sorry, discussion. Sorry, it's 4.30 in the morning here. <laughs> uh, and Rosanna Arquette is an award-winning actress and filmmaker, one of the first to speak out about Harvey Weinstein's abuse. Um, and Tarana Burke is with us, founder of the Me Too movement, executive director of the newly established Me Too International. Stay with us. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Yes, the verdict is in. Harvey Weinstein is a convicted rapist. On Monday, a Manhattan jury of seven men and five women found Weinstein guilty of raping then-aspiring actress Jessica Mann in a hotel room in 2013 and of sexually assaulting his production assistant Mimi Haley at his apartment in 2006 by forcibly performing oral sex on her. Um, I wanted to uh, continue our conversation with our two guests. Rosanna Arquette is with us in Los Angeles, and Tarana Burke is with us here in New York. Rosanna, you were one of the first to sound the alarm, to speak out around what Harvey Weinstein did to you. And if you could quickly, if and if you don't want to, certainly uh, feel free to say no, recount what happened to you. And then I want to talk about the years after um, uh, what happened to you in terms of what you felt was somehow uh, his attempts to discredit you. I, uh, I was asked to uh, go to meet Harvey Weinstein for a dinner at the Beverly Hills Ho Hotel. 
uh, for a movie that I was going to do. Uh, and he was giving me the new script. I arrived. They said, Mr. Weinstein, we'll see you upstairs. I went upstairs, you know, and thought, uh, you know, what's going on? But, oh, yeah, you know, he probably has the penthouse suite, which is what a lot of directors did when they came into town, st stayed in a big suite. And he opened the door in his white bathrobe, and he said, I can't move my neck, cannot move my neck. And, and I said, okay, well, uh, I'll get you a massage. And he grabbed my hand and pulled it down towards his penis. I pulled it away, and he said, Rosanna, you're making a very big mistake. Look what I've done for Gwyneth Paltrow and Elle McPherson. Those are the two names he gave me. And I said, I'll never be that girl, and I left. And, you know, I told people. They told me to keep my mouth shut. I told my agent. One of my agents was that guy, Paul Felcher, that actually uh, testified for Harvey Weinstein. So that's strange in that time. Um, so I wanted yeah. them to go to this whole issue of Harvey Weinstein hiring Black Cube, the private intelligence agency run largely by former officers of Israeli intelligence, Mossad, and other intelligence agencies. According to reporting by The New Yorker and others, Black Cube was hired by Weinstein via his law firm. Agency investigators reportedly adopted false identities in order to obtain information about his accusers, including, including Actress Rose McGowan. She spoke about being targeted by Black Cube investigators during an interview on CBS 60 Minutes and being tricked into revealing intimate details of her alleged abuse by Weinstein to one of their spies. Black Cube came after you personally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What toll did that take on you? I think it shaved years off my life. I think them coming after me spun my brain and still does in a way that's fractured a part of me that I don't think will ever fix. But these are people that hurt people, and that's their job. Their job is to hurt other people. So, you know, I hope they're proud at night. That was actress Rose McGowan, who filed a lawsuit against Weinstein, alleges he conspired to defraud, smear and marginalize her as she was preparing to name him in 2017. Now, last year, the year before, I saw you, Rosanna Arquette, at an event uh, organized by Ava DuVernay to, or to honor Dr. Martin Luther King. You were very shaken that day. It was right yeah. before the Sundance Film Festival. And filmmakers had just come to your house to show you a complete film about Harvey Weinstein called Untouchable. You had been interviewed by them, and you were now seeing the completed film. You told me that day that you had just seen the film, and you were learning for the first time that you were on that list of Black Cube. Can you explain uh, what you think they did and what he did to you after you were telling the story of what happened to you? Well, we knew we knew that we I was I, I knew I had been spied on by because Ronan Farrow had told me that before. But what they had was a signed contract and the picture of me as a target, and that's what they show in the film, signed by Harvey Weinstein. So scary, very scary. Mm. And uh, uh, he did this to a lot of people, and uh, that's that's what he's done for years. And if anybody hasn't read To Catch and Kill. I, I highly suggest reading Ronan's book or hearing him read it. That's Ronan Farrow's book, who, uh, yes. who revealed this uh, first in yeah. The New Yorker yeah. magazine.